Hello everybody, I'm Thomas Pack, and welcome back to Stories Untold. We're about to get into the last session, the last chapter of this long story-esque game. I'm very excited for this, and the last one, someone had pointed out that I was complaining a lot about not being able to see the screen. Apparently you're able to zoom the screen more, so my bad on that. Um, it just goes to show I'm not a perfect person, I'm not a perfect gamer, and I suck at a lot of things, but hopefully this last one will go a lot more smoothly than the last couple. I'm hoping that it kind of brings back more aspects of the first one. I'm hoping. Because I have been... Lo and now, like, this story is, like... Like, all the s separate stories are now intertwined because of that last one. It kind of revealed that there's something a little deeper going on than meets the eye. So I'm very excited to see what we're going to find out. So here we go. <laughs> I think that's enough of that for now. Come again? I was just ready to sit through that thing like we usually You're do. Fond of the show, aren't you? Y yes. Yes. This is a psychiatrist, or a psychologist, a therapist. Okay, come on. Let's get you down to the observation room. Come, what, what? Come again? What's going on? Where am I? This place must be starting to feel like home to you. Uh, no. It's actually rather Don't a worry. strange place right now. I'll try and get you out of here eventually. Thanks. Just so, yes, I'm in a hospital. Clearly. I'm thinking this is like a psychiatrist. That's my, that's my guess. And that we're being interviewed about something? Maybe okay. if the happenings with what's been room. going on? Just relax, and we'll get started in a moment. Okay. Am I going to see you? Hello? So I'm actually... Alright, Mr. Asian. Course. Now are you ready? I'm Mr. Asian, okay. Just hit record on the tape deck in front of you when you're ready. Okay, so I'm Mr. Asian. So I'm the guy, maybe from the first story, I don't, I don't think we ever found out a name of the first guy in the first story, but I'm the guy who was used in the lab to probe those alien things and then that I connected with. And in the second one, I, I, was, I was Mr. Asian in the snowy, you know, the Arctic watchtower, whatever that was. But it may not have been real, may have been in my mind. Maybe in a coma or sleeping or something. I don't know, but I think this is... Something's going on here. I'm ready. This is subject 12198623. New session entry. Yes. We have myself, Dr. Alexander Leading. And in a room we have our patient, Mr. James Asian. That's me. As we know, James has recently recovered from a two-week coma. Ah. Following his accident. See? In coma. our last three sessions. James's attempts to recollect events of the accident seen him merging his memory with his imagination. These okay. episodes have always ended in panic, and we've had to terminate the session abruptly. So yeah. Let's try and do this one better, James. So when you're ready, let's bring this back. Okay, so they yeah, were all just memories. Be, but you can do this. Well, a mix between memory James, and imagination. It's time to remember. What am I remembering exactly? your mind. It's like a conscious black box. Yeah. It can show you your memories. Look into it. Okay, so this wasn't actually happening. This was still in my mind, part of the imagination. And now, it represents our memories, our mind. And that's what we were really doing. We were looking into our own memories. Alright. Throw back to the second story. Still okay, and now I'm back here with a mix. In your most recent episode, you recalled a false memory of a, a false memory. remote weather station. You were isolated from the rest of the world, locked inside your coma. We interacted with you daily. Yes. You to wake. Your family would do number puzzles with you. 
anything really to bring so that was my family I was talking people needed to. answers James do you remember yeah 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 I, I have remember. another signal here for you James it's a 5610 FM you can't miss it oh no I have to go through this again five six one zero FM oh, okay one Alright, restart it. Zero four. Type in the numbers, James. You gotta see this. This is twenty F twelve nineteen eighty six twenty three zero four. Type in the numbers, James. I did. You gotta see. I gotta go back. Okay, so let me redeem myself now. How do I do again? Oh, not that. No, not that. Oh, no, no, no. Ah. Uh -huh. See, that's where I went wrong last time. Stop it! Oh, God, please. You need to shut up. Thank you. All right, so now let me let me zoom out now. Focus that. All oh, right, I need to report. Wait, what is this? Fatal accident. Wait, oh, oh, wait, this this is this is relevant. This is really very relevant. And that's why I can control this. Okay. James Asian. Okay, two vehicle. Okay, so we're in a car accident. Injured. Okay. Just one injured. What about the other vehicle? Date of birth. Pass no passengers. Driver. Deceased. Okay. So we were in a car accident. The other person died. Let me zoom out a little bit. Bring it to focus. Okay. Uh, arrived on scene to discover two cars had been involved in a near head-on collision. Mr. Asian found lying down outside his vehicle with head injuries. An ambulance was immediately called. His wounds sustained in the collision. The driver of the blue sedan, Mr. Hennings, was found dead on arrival. It was noticed that there was a strong smell of whiskey from the driver and an empty whiskey bottle on the passenger seat. Mr. Asian was questioned on scene. He described an oncoming blue sedan being clearly out of control, which he swerved to avoid. Mr. Asian's passenger was his sister. Driver of the blue sedan was an ex-police officer of 20 years. Wait, I thought they said there was no passenger. Oh, passenger number one. Oh, oh, we don't know what happened. So that we're trying to remember. Is that what we're trying to do? We're trying to remember what happened to the sister? Is my sister alive? It said. One injured. Okay. It said only one injured. And we were injured. Which means our sister was not. Anyway, okay. Is that what I had to do here? Is that it? Oi. I think that was it. Line one. I don't know. Code reference report. Uh... Oh, maybe what's circled. How many things are circled? One, two, three. Okay. Okay, I, I can, I can, I can uh, get on board with this. 20F fatal accident. Okay. Okay, so that's right. Okay. Next is down here. Empty whiskey. I, oh, I keep on wanting to press tab to go to the next one. Empty whiskey. Whiskey. Okay. And the last one is out of control. That's comforting. Out of control. Okay. Searching, analyzing file. Find the signal, James. 
Definitely. Yes, I know. That's what I've been doing. You have to face it, James. Finally. Face that she's dead. Seven thousand FM. What's seven thousand FM? It's not like it at all. I've worked with Officer Hennings for six years, and not once have we even talked about alcohol. Drunk driving. He, he was a father, a husband. He was fine. Clearly, no way he caused this. It's him. This Haitian guy. Plunging He's into got darkness. something to hide. A light flickers on. So, it really, I mean, yes, maybe he was a good person. Maybe he was a good guy. But a good person, you know, can still do stupid things. Maybe this doesn't make sense to you. No, it, you're very right. It doesn't make sense to me. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Can I go the other way? This way. Nope, can't go that way. All right. I don't know where I am. You step out into the hospital ward, only it seems abandoned. Your vision is blurred. Yeah, it is. This is where I just was. Am I in my memories? Sometimes they make you watch your past sessions to see what really happened. Yes, because in our sessions, I'm like cross between memories and hallucinations and imaginations. I don't know what's real. I don't know if this is real. Maybe this isn't real. Driving home, don't have that fifth pint. Don't have the first pint if you're driving home. Don't have the first pint. First steps to recovery. Yeah, okay. This is really blurry. That's pretty. You tense up, someone else is here. Can I leave? Nope. Can't leave. Ward number four. Who else is here? Is it Mrs. Miss? Nope, I can click out of the game. Is it Mr. Hemingway? What was the guy's name? Please stop. Grab the keys from the table. They weigh heavy in your hand. Uh, do they now? Okay, this got a lot creepier. Hello? Is anybody home? Am I about to get jump scared? Hello? Is there anything actually in here that I need to worry about? Oh. We it's a recording. Him lying there oh, so while his sister died in the car next to him. While Hennings died next to him. What the fuck was he thinking? She was still alive when we got to her. If he'd have done something, they could all still be here. What? What did I do? Or did I not do? Did I, could I have done something and I didn't? And that's why she's dead and that's why Mr. Hemmings is dead? Hennings? Hemmings? What was it? I don't remember. That's weird. Why? So we could have done something? Is that why like we're going through all this? Like PTSD kind of thing? Like we could have saved, but we didn't kind of thing. You spent most waking moments in here. Seats for visitors, not that you've ever had any. The only video they have, some horror compilation. Trash. Hey. Okay. Oh, this tells me. Stairwell, observ uh, observation room, reception, surgery, home care, coma ward. I should probably go into the coma ward. Can I have some hand sanitizer, please? I want to stay clean. Squeak. You only caught a glimpse of the room. You guess that's why there's no detail here. Okay, so this is definitely... I think he knows that this is in his mind and not actually happening. Because he doesn't have much memory of the room. So how detailed can it be if you've never seen it before? Williams. You honestly believe that Hennings was drunk at the wheel and not this little shit? If he wakes up. When he wakes up. I want answers. Until then, you handle it. You write it up. I'm out. So someone's in denial that he was drunk and is accusing us of possibly being the drunk one? How does that make sense? If they found the whiskey in the ex-officer's car, isn't that kind of like... Another door you never opened. You don't know what was in there. Is that cracked? Am I seeing things? 
Exit. Thank you. Hello. Waiting area is dark, but you feel a presence right behind you. Don't do that to me. Uh oh. What was that? I started opening that door. Don't you can't tell me I didn't start opening. So you just gonna pretend like that didn't happen? Where the hell am I? Doors, so many doors. Only one is open. No. Locked. Locked. Why didn't this one say locked? Nope, just that one's locked. Did I get a key? Someone breathes on your neck, standing over you. Hello? Can you not breathe over me, please? Is it the doctor? You feel dread in the pit of your stomach. Hello? Hi. Okay, we have a 22-year-old male just brought in from a vehicle collision. He was 22 year old. at the scene, but collapsed on arrival to the emergency ward. The other passengers died in the accident. I'm getting no pulse. Prepare for defib. I'm That's the full to ten and give me 100 jewels. The heart. I get it. What do I do? 100 jewels. Charging up full to ten. 100 jewels. Oh, oh, this is me. This is me. Right? No, is it? Oh no, what do I do? Come on. C I'm trying. I don't know what to do. A hundred. A hundred? Is that what this is? X. Oh. Uh. Hi. No. Come on, hundred jewels. Charging up full to ten. Oh, a hundred jewels to ten. Okay. Got it? Am I on the wrong thing? No. A hundred jewels. Charge up full to ten. Am I on the wrong thing here? Really? I can't Th see what I'm doing. Get this on the screen now. I am trying, good sir. Oh. There it is. Blue. No reaction from first stage. Let's try higher. 200 okay. jewels. Keep the amp charged at 10. 200 it is, buddy boy. Let's get my own heart going. 200 jewels. I'm. Keep the charge at 10. Try it. Buzz me. Okay, bring me back, boys. Reaction of some sort here. So this is like this is. Let's keep going. This is what he meant. Like this is what I was experiencing. 360 charge full. 360. You trying to kill me? Ski. This is this is actually really cool. I like this because it's like Come on, it's bring. I'm going. I'm bringing everything full cycle. Three sixty. Go, buzz me. Clear. <laughs> well, would you look at that? Oh, is that my eye? It seems we have a pulse. That's my eye. Stable. We need to run an X-ray right away. X-ray. I can do that. X-ray. Now what? That X-ray. Let's get it going now, please. You are annoying. I gotta charge you, right? Scream. And light on. Go. What do we got? Looks like an intracerebral hemorrhage. Uh oh. Please that don't sound good. Now for relief pressure. Prepare for trepanation. That's what this is. Switch on a drill, please. Aye, aye, Capitano. No, no. Stop charging. Stop. Go. The drill, please. Drill's on. <coughs> no? Off. On. Still TV. There we go. What is this going into though? What is in what is in there then? Thanks! Oh Yeah, it's coming at me now. That wasn't over there. That's next to my head. Oh, it's in my ear. Oh. Back here.
Okay. Am I alive still? Am I dead now? I don't know, but I feel like I may have to do some typing. Yes, this is my favorite part. Not only is tonight New Year's Eve, but tomorrow you leave on a six-month trip abroad with friends. Mum, Dad, and your sister Jennifer have decided to throw a party to celebrate it all. The house is full. This is going to be the accident, I can already tell you. You're in the living room, and as usual, you don't recognize a soul. Look around. The room is full of chatty strangers, mostly friends of Mum and Dad. There's a door to the hall. Go through door. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Walk through door. I'm Talk to... Talk to... What is it, Jennifer? Leave room. You push through the crowd. <laughs> okay. Into the hallway. The hallway is as welcoming as ever. Only this time, the folks have put up a great big banner across the main wall. Half-finished drinks are banded on almost every horizontal surface. Stairs lead up, although the party is firmly downstairs. Let's go upstairs. As much as you'd love to, you promised you'd stay downstairs with the party. Okay, um, what does the banner say? Read banner. Bon voyage, James. Finally, not the family disappointment. Wow. Where? Okay, so this is like a going away party. Okay. Um, ha oh, no. I know what you want me to do. No. No, I don't want to do that. No, he wants me to have a drink. No! Crap! You are drinking someone else's drink. Get your... Oh, get a drink. Have to go into the kitchen to get a drink. Tell all the best parties in the kitchen. Oh, no! I already know where this is going. There are drinks and food on the table, and the party is in full swing. Dad has cooked a hog roast, which is probably on the table. All the nose eating. Eat hog roast. I'm sorry. Eat. I want the hog roast. Can I talk to my dad? Talk to your dad. You pour yourself a drink. Nice to loosen up. Oh, so yeah, this guy is just going through PTSD. He blocked out all of that in his memory. And he, I guess he hasn't come to terms with the fact that it's his fault. Okay. Um, what, what do I do now? I don't even know what to do. Uh, can I talk to my sister now? She's too far away and the room is too loud. Go to sister. You push through apologizing over and over to get the Jennifer. Okay. Go to sister. You hug. You're going to miss each other. You thank her for the party. She asks if you are enjoying the party. Yes, I am. You tell her it's great, even though you don't really know anyone. She tells you to enjoy it anyway and to loosen up. She asks you to get her a drink. Get Jennifer a drink. You pour Jen a drink and one for yourself too. There's never an awkward silence with Jennifer. She's, she always has a question. She asks if you have anything sorted for the big trip. Tell her my plans. She repeats herself, asking if you are ready for the trip. Oh. I am ready. Sh yes. You tell her yes. That you have packed everything with plenty of room to spare. Another hug. Your family have really gone out of their way to make this trip happen for you. It might be what you need to get some perspective and maybe not fuck up so much. She's going to miss you. You are going to miss her. She walks away. Jen has disappeared into the crowd. You're left standing, nodding and smiling at the approving faces. There is so much to do for this move. Can't mess it up. But first, a drink. You pour and down another drink. Anything to move the night along. The Eve party? You're about, to know, you're about to go to the hall when you notice the utility room door is open, at first. 
Go to the utility room, because that was that was always locked in the first story. You open the door and peer in. You're never allowed in here normally. This is where Dad keeps his fine wines and whiskeys. Ceiling to floor racks, a collector, although he does actually drink them too. There is a bottle with a ribbon round it and a card. Read card. You pick up the whiskey and the card. It's your dad's handwriting. Son, we're so proud of you and everything you've achieved. You've earned this. It's a bottle of 25-year-old double malt. You shouldn't really, but you have to try it. With your whiskey in hand, you take in the room around about you. There must be hundreds, no thousands of pounds worth of drink in here. You really must thank your dad for the whiskey. Thank dad. I'm sorry. You head back into the kitchen, clutching your new best friend. You stumble out of the utility room and back into the kitchen. That is one strong whiskey. You take another swig and give, give the thumbs up to dad across the room. He nods and winks. Now leave party. You go back out to the hallway. A few bumps and laughs on the way through and you make it to the hall. You stop dead in your tracks. It's Jen, covered in blood. Help Jen. She's, starting, she's staring straight at you. No one else notices. Talk to Jen. Blood is dripping down her face. It's mixing with tears. Or just type Jen. I'm sorry. I don't understand. Help Jen. I'm sorry. I don't understand. See, this is the thing. This, this, this is him realizing... Clean the blood. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Oh, the lights flickering. Uh, talk to Jen. Don't understand. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I don't understand. We tried our best, Mrs. Asian, but her injuries were too severe. No, I... I don't understand. I'm just, just talking to her. I'm afraid Jennifer passed away before we could get to her in surgery. We did the best we could. I'm so sorry. Where is she? Let me see her. Please, Mrs. Asian, take a seat. I don't want to take a seat. Let me talk to her. Now. I'll arrange for you to see her. In the meantime, James is in recovery. He's stable for now. I don't want to see him. You are standing in the hallway. Something had stopped you in your tracks. While searching your mind, your sister interrupts. She waves her hand in front of you and asks if you can drive her home. You still feel out of sorts. Those words echo. No. Don't drive her home. Don't drink and drive. Yeah, yeah, we can talk in the car. Go get your keys. Get my keys. Where, where are my keys? You need to look for them. They must be either in the kitchen or in the living room. They're probably in the living room. You're sure your keys are in the living room? The living room has much more relaxed atmosphere compared to the kitchen. Various guests are sat on the chairs having civilized conversations. There's a coffee table in the middle of the room. Your mom is pouring a drink at the ca drinks cabinet. Talk to mom. Look for keys. Get keys. <sighs> um, look around. Coffee table, drinks cabinet. One chair is overflowing with jacket and coats. Get my coat. You search through all the jackets and coats until you find yours. Aha! Car keys in the pocket. You grab both. Back to the hallway. Keys in hand, you head back into the hall. Jen thanks you for helping her out. She has work in the morning, and no one else is in any fit state to drive. You can handle it, though. You know the road like the back of your hand, don't you? 
You open the front door and walk out into the freezing night. The cold air hits you. You are glad you have your jacket with you. There is a dusting of snow around you as you step down from the porch. The yard extends around the back of the house, and the car sits at the front of the house. You fumble with the car handle, confused until Jen tells you maybe use the key in your hand. Fumbling with the car keys, you eventually get the door open and climb inside. See, this is like telltale signs you shouldn't be driving. You can't even... You're fumbling with everything. The car is freezing. As you fumble around with your seatbelt, your sister opens up the glove box and hands you a note and a key that was inside. She tells you that it's for when you return. The note is from your dad and reads, Hi, son. Hope you enjoy your break. You'll need to fire up the generator around back to get the power and lights on. Also found something in the attic for you. It's in your room. Enjoy. See, that's, that's what we remember. And after that, it became kind of twisted in our, in our memory. The imagination part kicked in. Start the car. Try to turn the ignition with sheer willpower, despite holding the keys. Keys in the ignition. It takes a number of attempts. We eventually slot the key into the ignition. Start the car. You turn the key in the ignition, and the car roars to life. Drive, sister. The car squeals, but stays sister. Release the brake. You very hesitantly release the handbrake. Drive, car. You put the car in gear and pull out of the driveway like a first-time driver. You really shouldn't be driving. You, I, am driving, very drunk on the road towards town where your sister stays. Jen started dozing off as soon as the journey got going. This shouldn't take long. You come to a junction. Is it left or right? You can't remember. You don't want to, but you had a, had better ask Jen. Oh. Ask Jen for directions. She grunts and throws her arm to the left. It's left. Of course it's left. I guessed left. Go left. You turn the car left at the junction and accelerate off. Confident that you are on the right road now, you loosen up and put your foot down on the accelerator. You feel powerful as the engine roars at your command. Jen sits up in her chair and clutches your arm. She asks you to slow down. Slow down. That's not what really happened, though, is it? You're all over the place, James. Pull over. Jen is hitting your arm and yelling at you, crazy sister. Strange. There is a set of headlights coming directly at you, but really slow, like slow motion. Get out of the way. You try to react, but your body isn't responding. There's nothing you can do to stop this. There's no way to control it. The lights merge with your car. The outside James, joins the inside. Sake, pull over. The whole world around you begins to scream. James! It was at this very moment. Wasn't it, James? The moment you lost it all. Your sister. Your parents. Yourself. And then you made it worse. Go on. Show us what you did. You wake up in the car. Your world is upside down. Your seatbelt struggles against gravity, trying to hold you in your seat. An impact into another car has torn a hole in the chasis. Poisonous fumes spill into your car from the engines. You are in grave danger. You have to get out of here. Get out of the car. Can I help my sister? Can't do anything for her right now. You need to help yourself now. You can't move. Your seatbelt is still in place. Do the seatbelt. Take off the seat. You release yourself from the seat. Gravity takes over as you slump on the roof of the car. Get out of the car. You squeeze through the wreckage and fall oh, to your knees. Every breath brings pain to your chest. Your head is throbbing. A blue car has smashed into the passenger side of your car. Your life cannot be ruined by this. 
You are standing holding your whiskey, and your dad's note, flashing lights, are approaching at a distance. With the lights approaching closer, you begin to hear the shrill of their sirens. You simply cannot go to jail for this. You clean the bottle to remove your connection with the whiskey. You then very deliberately spill the remainder of the bottle's contents onto the driver, and you toss the incriminating evidence onto his passenger seat. A circle of flashing lights surround you, illuminating, illuminating the crash site in the darkness. Behind them, an army of people all staring. One figure steps out, a silhouette, and walks towards you. And this is what was happening. Sorry, you are not making any sense. Look at Silu. Whatever spell you want. Silu. How and day. The silhouette is a police officer and in uniform. He beckons you to approach. Approach the silhouette. As you approach the man, the pulsating lights around you get dimmer and dimmer while the pain in you in your head increases. I know you. you fall to the ground. I know you're tearing yourself apart over it. But no matter what you keep telling yourself, you have to listen to me. That accident, that poor man, me. You have to remember. It was all your fault. I know what you did. How you left me there to protect yourself. Planting evidence on some poor man. You went headfirst into that officer and you wrecked all of our lives. And then you couldn't even take responsibility. You did the right thing for you and no one else. Save yourself. Only it was wrong, wasn't it? Look at you now. Utterly consumed by it. Say it, James. And now is when we come to terms with it. Say it. Tell them. Wow, this is this is heavy. This got a lot heavier. Listen to yourself. Sometimes it makes you watch your best as Mister really happened. Doctor Doctor is always watching. Him. I don't know if anyone else is ever with him. All of your episodes recorded today. Do you not understand? Oh, no, don't do that. This episode you're having must come to an end. Press stop. Well, I think we've made progress today, Mr. Asian. I guess we should tell the police what you've told us. Although I don't suspect they'll take you anywhere. I think you'll be with us for quite some time. Come on, let's get you back to your shows. I'll see you tomorrow. I was not ready for that. I, I was not ready for that. Not in the least bit. Ooh, that was heavy. That was really heavy. That, that, that took something that was so... That was so, like, almost supernatural. Turned from supernatural and, like, paranormal to sci-fi to... Like, of such a harsh and brutal reality. I, I'm, I'm speechless. That was... 
uh, here I, I thought it was like aliens and stuff and that we were messing with something you know otherworldly or so, something and yet we're dealing with something that's so real you know to everyday life you know this this kind of thing happens all the time and these people go through these you know PTSD because of this and wow so the whole thing was Mr. Asian who was going away, who, who was only 22. He was only 22. I'm 23. He was only 22. It can happen to anyone. Anyone. Stories told. I just got the achievement stories told. Wow. Wow, that was, that was really... That was such an, uh, an impressive and unusual way to tell this kind of story. Because that took you everywhere. You know, all frustration aside, the story that this told, it, it was brilliant. It was phenomenal. Wow. That was... I'm like, my mind is like everywhere right now. I can't collect my thoughts out with that. It's scary. It's it's very scary to to like think about what these people go through. You know that brought you into you know minutes. You know to the whole basically the, the whole party leading up to it. It basically forced you, even though you knew, and like I have to imagine the developers knew that the player was going to know exactly what was happening at that party. Like it couldn't have been a surprise to anyone playing this game, like, oh, what's happening? I, like, oh, I'm drinking this whiskey, and now I'm getting into a car, and like, piecing it together like that. You had to know, as soon as you got to the party, exactly what you were gonna do. You were gonna go straight for that alcohol, and you couldn't avoid it. There was no way to avoid it. And again, this was just all playing with his own memories. And it was bringing you with the last one, in and out. Like, back at the hospital, your mom saying she doesn't wanna see you. Your sister, sister had passed, and you were alive. You were like coming through, and she didn't want to see you because it was your fault. Wow. Well, that that was stories untold. You know, I wonder when the house abandoned was made. Because again, the house abandoned was made before this entire thing. I wonder if when that was made, the developer had the idea to go along with this kind of story or to just have that be its own. Because that itself is its own entity. It's its own game in a way. It was short. But you could have that standalone and still have that creepy, you know, chills down your spine. Because I at first thought that these were, these were each individual stories. I didn't know they were all going to be pieced together the way they were, especially the way they were. But... So I wonder if like they had the idea to make that and then eventually make the others and piece them together like that. Or just they had made that and they're like, oh, let's kind of run with this and, and move forward with it. And they just kind of piece it along the way. I don't know. But that was that was phenomenal. That was absolutely phenomenal. I did not expect like I expected to enjoy it. I expected to be creeped out. I didn't expect it to. Like tell a story like it did in the way it did and I, I'm thoroughly impressed with that I'm thoroughly impressed and I, I'd say you know go play it for yourself but obviously you guys now know the story but recommend it to a friend do that you know if some, one of your friends hasn't seen this or heard of it you know tell them to check it out it tells a really deep real story which is scary because how real this really could be. It's scary, but it's it's true and it's 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 a reality that people have to face on a day-to-day -day basis. But I am gonna leave this here. Let me know what you guys thought of this down in the comments below. I really, really wanna know what you guys thought of this because this was incredible. I loved it. And it really like it 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 hit me. You know, it hit me hard. So let me know what you guys thought of this down in the comments below. But I'm going to leave this here. So thank you everybody so much for watching. Be sure to check those annotations for more videos that we've done. Once again, I'm Thomas Pac-Man. And I'll see you next time.